Hi, Steve Grishaka here again. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a didgeridoo for three dollars. Okay? Um, I showed you how to do a hand pan for twenty-four dollars. With hand pans, really, I couldn't call it a hand pan. You have to call it a saucepan because that's just what it sounds like. But actually, you can make a fairly decent sounding for a beginner now. Um, didgeridoo for three bucks. Um, now, the first thing you have to do is, is when, you, when you get a didgeridoo, like a beginner didgeridoo, is you have to learn how to do circular breathing. If you don't do circular breathing, the most you can play a didgeridoo is for maybe 20 seconds or so, and then you're out of breath. If you circular breathe, you can play, after you work up to it, an hour straight, non-stop, without ever stopping, removing the didgeridoo and taking a breath. Um, I think the first thing I'll go through is that because that seems to be a big thing that people said circular breathing oh I don't know how to do that or I could never learn how to do that well when I first started learning that um, it, I was struggling it, with it for two weeks I tried blowing a straw in a glass of water I tried different things and I just couldn't get it because you're you're trying to do something different than you're normally used to used to breathing in and breathing out. You're not used to doing both things at the same time. Um, but there's a secret to it. And I learned that secret that after I learned, I saw that one video, boom, that same day I could circular breathe. After two weeks of struggling with it, once I knew what was going on, my brain kicked in and showed me how to do it. But again, there's still a learning process because you're trying to do things different. It's kind of like when you're learning to play a drum and you're, let's say you want to learn a paradiddle, which is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. When you first start doing it, your brain, you know, is kind of awkward, right? Let's see. Right, left, right, right. Left, right, left, right, whoop, no, don't want to do that. Left, right, left, no. Left, right, left, left. Right, left, right, right. Okay, so you're struggling here with it when you first start doing it. But after a while, you can play a paradiddle. And you don't have to think about it, your hands just do it. It's the same thing with the with the um, circular breathing. Um, at first, you have to struggle thinking about it, breathe in, breathe out, and after a while, you just do it. You don't think about it. Now, what's the secret? Well, first of all, can you do this? Do I have my cheeks puffed out? If you can do that. You're closing off your neck, and that's the secret to circular breathing, is closing off your neck. If you can't do this, you're not going to be able to circular breathe. Maybe there's something wrong with the back of your throat or something, go see a doctor, there could be something, you know, something not right there. But if you can do this, you can circular breathe. So how do you do it? Um, you're, you're filling up your your mouth with air, closing off the back of your throat, blowing out through your mouth, and at the same time breathing in through your nose. Okay? To do it simply, rather than using the muscles of my jaw, I'm just going to use my fingers. Now watch. I was making a noise out my mouth and breathing in at the same time. Simple. That's all there is to it. Not any more complicated than that. Try it again. Well, instead of using your fingers, you use the muscles in your um, in your cheeks to blow the air out. So you go something like this. Now you hear that distinct difference between the out and the in, the out and the in? What you do is you try and refine that so that they blend in and you don't get that distinct. So you're Whoops, messed up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So that gentle, that kind of smooths it out so it's not as distinct. Um, then you do it on the ditch. Well, first I'll show you the $3 ditch. Here it is. A piece of PVC pipe, um, an inch and a half from um, Home Depot. You get a 10 foot length for $6. You can make two didgeridoos out of that, so three bucks a piece. Okay, now, does it sound good? Actually, it doesn't sound bad. I've gone into some variety shops where they have so-called didgeridoos that's for $50, $75, and I've blown on them, and oh, they were just awful. This $3 piece of plastic does a heck of a lot better than those. The, but uh, you go a little more money, you can get some decent didgeridoos. They're going to be better than this. But this is something for a beginner to practice on. Maybe after you play with this for a week or two, you're going to say, I don't like that. And you haven't wasted hundreds of dollars on a didgeridoo. But if you practice for a few weeks and you say, you know, I really like that, uh, I think I'm going to go out and get a decent didgeridoo. Well, there's an advantage to that because now you know what you're looking for in a sound. You go and look for a didgeridoo, you can play it a little bit and say, hey, I like the sound of that one. Well, play another one and say, ooh, I don't like that one. And you could better pick out a didgeridoo than if you have no clue of how to play it. All right, so how do you, what does this one sound like? There's nothing on it, it's just a flat end. I haven't put any beeswax on it, I haven't smoothed it out, nothing, just a plain piece of pipe. You see, that's really fairly decent. Now, the when you're making it, the longer it is, the deeper it is. The shorter it is, the higher it is. See the difference in length? Now, this is going to be very high. You wouldn't want one this high, but it'll just illustrate it. That's a mosquito ditch, okay? Um, what note, the didgeridoo plays one note and then on a toot, which is about an octave higher, it plays a second note. So what you do is you cut the length for your note. If it's too sharp or too flat, you chop a little piece off until you get the note you want. Um, what I did when I was first learning how to play is I made another one out of PVC plastic and then I painted it. I figured let me have a little fun with it and paint it. It looks a lot cooler to paint it than to have just a piece of plastic like this. And I got a little end cap on it and I cut out a hole here so I didn't have to use any wax on it. And I've got a nice smooth, I smoothed it out with sandpaper, smooth end piece here that um, is easy to play on. This one is a D. Okay. You're going to sing along with me, Zeb, huh? <laughs> now, here's one that I made out of a piece of bamboo. I picked this up at a variety store uh, for $10. And on the bamboo, you have these seams here. And there's like a, a membrane there. So if you try blowing it, then nothing happens because these membranes are in the way. So you get a piece of rebar, you slide it down in there and you break the membranes, slide it back and forth to get all the rough edges off out of it, and then you have an open tube that you have a didgeridoo for. This one I put a uh, some beeswax on the end of it, and it sounds pretty decent. This one's lower than the other one. Okay. Now this one I made out of a steel pipe, and it's a uh, inch and two inches and three eighths in diameter, and it's heavy. And I also put an end piece on it. The end piece didn't seal very well. I was getting a lot of air leaks, so I put some beeswax around the seam here to seal it. And let's hear this one. Huh? 
okay that sounds pretty decent too for I don't know what did this steel pipe cost I don't know 10 or 15 or 20 bucks something like that um, now um, there there's also another option you can buy a fairly inexpensive um, if you go to digproject.com, oh wait, let me first of all say, I don't get paid, if I mention somebody's name, a company's name, I'm not getting paid for this. I just happen to like what they have and I'm saying it. Uh, they're not paying me to say this. Um, if you go to digproject.com, they have a, a, what's called a traveling didgeridoo, which comes in pieces about this long and you screw it together and you can actually leave off some of the pieces and you can get four different didgeridoos out of this one didgeridoo for $115 and it sounds pretty good. Um, you can get a D on it, a D sharp, an E and an F. Those are the main notes that you're, you're looking for in didgeridoo so you can get a feel. Well, do I like a D? Do I like a D sharp? Do I like an E? Do I like an F? Uh, so when you go to buy a didgeridoo, you, you, another one, you can say, I want, I'm looking for a D. I like a D. Okay, or I'm looking for an F. Or a C-sharp. C-sharp's a little lower. Um, I'll show you one of those. But um, that, I'll put the, uh, the link for uh, ditchproject.com at the base of my video. Uh, there's another place in Lakesh. Uh, I N um, L A K E S H, I believe it is. I'll put a link for that too below. They're a group of music musicians that also make didgeridoos, and I bought a couple of didgeridoos from them. And their CDs, their CDs are amazing. I mean, they are just. I can listen to those over and over and over again and never get tired of it. They really do a nice job with the dig on on those uh, DVDs. I'm sorry. Uh, CDs, I should say. Um, all right, let me show you some of those. Now, another place you can get didgeridoos is from the Did Shop in Australia. They have been around for a long time. They're they're reliable. All their didgeridoos are hollowed out by termites, uh, and they're collected by um, native people from Australia and those people get paid for going out and doing this. So it, it's, it's, it's completely genuine for Australia. Um, what's nice about it, they have hundreds of didgeridoos on their website and they grade them for different grades uh, of the sound quality coming out of it. Plus they have sound samples for every didgeridoo that they have there. So you can say, all right, I'm just looking for a mediocre one so you look in a mediocre camera I'm looking for something I want to play on stage something concert quality you look under the concert quality ones and well I just want a cheap didgeridoo from Australia you can do that too but all of the didgeridoos are not ones that look like didgeridoos but don't play but actually play and play well um, I'll leave a link for that below as well oh um, let me say too, the uh, sound on my, I've got a little cheap camera that I'm doing this video with and the sound is just this, the built-in microphone on this camera which is not the greatest so these things probably sound a lot better in real life than they do uh, all over this camera but this is what I've got and it's all I have to take video with. Um, I do have a good sound recorder that I can make good recordings on but then I don't have this skill level uh, of how to use the video software to take it off of here, put it in there, and then sync it properly so that the sound matches the video. So rather rather than do that, I'm just using what I have, which is this little camera. Um, since we mentioned the Did Shop, let me uh, show you one of those. I got this one from the Did Shop. It's a uh, it's a D, okay and it, it's heavy. I mean, it's heavier than my steel pipe that I had there. And this is genuine eucalyptus hollowed out by termites uh, and so forth. And this one is a, a uh, what they would consider not concert quality, but halfway in between middle and good, okay?
this is a nice sounding ditch okay another one I have is an F ditch which is a higher ditch this is made out of cherry and was made by a fellow uh, Chad Butler in Oregon and this does not have beeswax on it but it's finished off with the wood to give you a nice mouthpiece here okay the end is bellowed out a little bit it's it's a very nice looking one and it sounds good too it's a fairly decent sound a nice toot on it too. This one is a D from In Lakesh. In Lakesh made this one. It's very lightweight. It has lots of back pressure. It's very easy to play. Very nice ditch. This one's also from D in Lakesh. This is a C Shaw. This is a very low ditch. Big bellow here. It's uh, higher than I am tall, but um, this is a C Shaw. Again, now this looks like this might be really hard to play, but it has very good back pressure and it's it's really quite easy to play this one is um, like the other one it has uh, beeswax for the mouthpiece you notice you can play this one fast not all deep sounding um, didgeridoos can you play fast uh, because they just can't do it but this one can That's another very nice ditch. Okay, why would you want to play a ditch? Well, it's fun. And um, secondly, uh, there's some history to it. The ditch has been, been played in Australia for 40,000 years. It's the oldest instrument, in addition to drums, uh, that, that has been with mankind for all these tens of thousands of years. I mean, when you pick up a ditch you're, you're, and you're playing it, you're playing with 40,000 years of history. I mean, that, that's, to me, that's absolutely incredible. Um, secondly, lungs, it builds up your lungs. Some people have had lung damage from their occupations working with bad things in the air and so forth. It can build up your lung capacity. Another thing that's good about playing the didge is uh, for sleep apnea. Um, some people have sleep apnea and this helps strengthen the, the muscles so they're not flabby in the throat so that it reduces uh, uh, that kind of a problem. Uh, but most of all you want to use it use a didge for fun. Just play it to, to enjoy it and uh, these other side benefits are good as well. Um, a final point is you say, all right, I'm going to get a didge and I'm going to play it all day long for three weeks until I master. No, you're not. Okay. 
let me tell you why because there's some there's a practical point you pick up a dig and start playing it you've never played a dig before you're going to be able to play about five minutes max and your lips are just going to swell up and hurt okay so figure you're going to play five minutes the first day and the second day and the third day and you play five minutes a day for a couple of weeks you'll start building up your lips so that eventually you can play one two hours a day and it doesn't bother your lips but it does in the beginning so uh, keep that in mind when you get a practice digging to be practicing don't expect you're going to be playing it for a couple of hours when you first get it because your lips are not going to hold out and if you push it you'll crack your lips and then you won't be able to play for a week or two till your lips heal up okay so take it slow in the beginning let your lungs and your um, your lips and your throat build up gradually play it five minutes a day every day for a couple of weeks to start building yourself up and you know throw some circular breathing in there uh, get that under control and uh, you should be on your way you can get it start with a cheap ditch and then after you can play a little bit then go pick yourself out a good ditch okay take care